In this problem, we're asked plain and simple, what is the shape of a 4D orbital? Well, to determine what the shape of this orbital is, first we need to determine what the quantum numbers involved in this orbital are. So if we look at 4D, we can immediately get two very important pieces of information. First off, that 4 tells us our principal quantum number, or n, which in this case is 4. No big surprise there. D tells us about L, our angular momentum quantum number, but not in as quite of a straightforward manner. In order to get that, we need to determine what D means, for which we can use a chart listed in the text and which is reproduced here. We can see that when D is used, our angular momentum quantum number is 2. Therefore, for this orbital, n equals 4 and l equals 2. With that information in mind, we can determine the number and types of nodes that will be featured in this orbital. The total number of nodes, as mentioned in the text, is n minus 1. Since n here is 4, the total number of nodes will be 3. Recall that there are two possible types of nodes, angular nodes and radial nodes. The angular nodes are always equal to the angular momentum quantum number, L, which in this case is 2. Since there are three total nodes and two angular nodes, that means our radial nodes have to be what's left over, or N minus L minus 1, or 1. So for this orbital, we have two angular nodes and one radial node. Based on that, we can draw a picture. Again, here are the nodes that we're working with. Let's start with angular nodes. Recall that an angular node is a plane in which no electron density can exist. Here we've got two planes, so we'll put one right there and another perpendicular to it. Next, we're looking at radial nodes. A radial node, in contrast to an angular node, is a spherical area in which there can be no electron density. So we're going to put a circle that is centered at the intersection of these two angular nodes, which will look like this. Note that this is actually a sphere instead of a circle, but I'm drawing the 2D projection because my technological capabilities are a little bit limited here. Anyway, after that, now that we've got places where electron density cannot be, we can draw in orbitals that show where it is possible for us to have electron density. So first off, I'm going to draw a little blurb inside of that first top right quadrant. And then on the outside of that, there will also be some electron density. Note that it doesn't continue to infinity for reasons that are explained in the text. I'm going to then draw the same filling in on each of my quadrants until I have something that looks like this. Now again, this is a 2D projection of what's actually a 3D image. So if I look around on the internet a little, I can find an image that looks something like this, which does indeed show the 3D nature of what I'm trying to draw in two dimensions. It's worth noting that in this picture there are alternating colors between the outer and the inner lobes depending on the quadrant that you're in. The colors here represent the sign of the wave function in each of those positions, red for positive or blue for negative, or vice versa since this whole thing is rotatable. But recall that when we actually draw these 3D lobes, we're representing the probability of finding an electron in any of those locations, which is related to the square of the wave function. So again, to determine how to draw the 4D orbital, or any orbital, we look at the quantum numbers n and l involved, which we can get from the 4 and the d respectively. We use those to determine the number and types of nodes, which we can then draw to illustrate regions where there can be no electron density, and then we draw our electron density around that. 